All right, hey. Hey, folks, welcome back. All right, are we live? We, we are live, but are we alive? That's that's the question. I hope, uh, hmm. I hope they let us know. Gotta let us know, folks. I got this new breakfast thing I do. I take a carnation instant breakfast, like a vanilla one, and I mix it with like a thing of fruit juice. Carnation. Unbelievable amount of energy. <laughs> well, I think that's a sugar high. I think you've just described about 400 grams. It's just health sugar. food, and I'm healthy right now. <laughs> I may have to take a little nap now, though. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. Hello, everybody. Happy Monday. How's your Mondays going, everybody? Uh, um, good. Good. Had a nice little stream. It's, uh, you know, uh, we, we hit, uh, we hit, uh, 69 cents a barrel of oil on 420. So I feel like we kind of did it. Uh, we can all go back to bed. We did it, Reddit. Wait, 69 cents per barrel of oil. Is that a real thing? Uh, supposedly it's okay. actually negative now. Wait, oil is free? Uh, oil, yeah, they, go get your barrels. Yeah. The, the go, go get all the gas you can right now. Supposedly. Fill it up. Wait, I, I, sorry. I, I feel like this is a reference to a thing I'm not familiar with. Uh, no, I'm no, no. Oil is definitely plummeting. Like that's that's a world event that's happening right now. Huh. Yeah, it's uh, uh, via oilprice.com. Uh, let me find out if what I'm getting is important or not right now. I'm getting a phone call from. Mm. My investor, his stock market advisor, Brian. This oil stock we've been investing in. <laughs> yeah, get in on oil. Bye, 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 bye. bye. Uh, per Bloomberg, WTI crude oil futures trade at negative price. Can a can a can a stock be worth negative money? Don't you go out of business at negative? Don't you go business at zero? Well, that's yeah, for places in Texas and Oklahoma and stuff. That is the concern. Oui. Uh yeah, and so how does that work? You can yeah. can you just buy into that? I'd like to. I'll take I'll take ten thousand of that. Well, 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 yeah. I mean, basically, they have more output than there's demand for it. Mm -hmm. So at some point, they're like, "Hey, we'll pay you to take it off our hands." Yeah. Uh, yeah. It I mean, doesn't include refining or anything like that. Some producers are paying customers to take. Oh, it off. I still hear my voice. Oh, oh well. Okay. Is it is it is it very bad? It's annoying. But my voice is always annoying. Well, uh, I can go to headphones today. Oh, sorry, you have to wear headphones like we do too. Sorry. Well, uh, yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> I'm, you're not wrong. Oh God, my dumb laugh. <laughs> Why am I still hearing it? Or did it go away? You're saying the laughter died? Yeah, my stupid laugh. I don't. Uh, I still hear my voice. Uh. Well, it's it's because it's being picked up over our mics. Okay. Well, this is why we're using headphones now, right? Because of Opal or whatever. Are or... you are you are you gonna are you gonna be able to work with this? Because if you if 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 it's not working for you, we could do Skype or or uh, or whatever uh, down the no, road. No, we, we'll we all... were told to use headphones because of Opal. So we just I, I've been using headphones. I, I guess of yes that, but, yes. Uh, it's a known fact that 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 yeah. I am not on headphones. So if you'd like, we can pause and I can figure out a solution and wear headphones, and that might make it more pleasant for you. Or if you're able to work with it, we can keep going. We, uh, we know it's my voice concern. in the background is annoying. I'm just saying. Okay, then you know what? Let's take a moment. Let me see if I can find some headphones and plug them into this monitor. Okay. That's through. What do y'all think about this? That the coronavirus might be spreading through farts, huh? Yes or no? Yay or nay? Are we in on it? <laughs> no. So if you were if you were trying to smell some farts, man, you better think twice about it, or wear a mask over, or wear a, a filter over your butthole. Is this a thing? Apparently so. I mean, it's like whatever. It's it's link bait trash. <laughs> yeah. You never know, though. Maybe, maybe, maybe that's the 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 missing link. The fartiest cuisines I... create the biggest. Uh, uh, outbreak yeah my frustration is like 
where you hear the health advice or stuff like this, and in some of it, it seems pretty solid. And other things, it's like, 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 you know, does it spread on packaging? And they're like, oh, we know. And like, well, probably not. But then like, well, how do we know it does? I'm like, well, there've been no studies that show that it does that. I'm like, how many studies have been done to test that? Well, none. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, oh, great. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I think we're, we are getting to a point now where, you know, it was what into February before we were really able to capture actual samples of the virus, you know, because through January, China wouldn't let us have any. So like, you know, now into April, we're probably, you know, getting what would be the normal cycle for studies on this kind of stuff to be peer reviewed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Bryce, if there's no headphones anywhere near, I'll just turn the volume down just so it's not as feedbacky to just, me. Just give us another minute. We're working on it. Okay. I'm saying like if we, if it's, there's a problem, like I'll just turn the volume down a bit. Um, Yeah. highlights the need for more pathogen study and uh, maybe some sort of center that studies exclusively diseases. That would be kind of cool too. <laughs> a central one though, you know? Yeah. Central. Like, like that's Cent- their focus uh, D- disease, like real disease, real infectious diseases, you know? And maybe, maybe the, con- the control of it too. I don't know. Yeah. I'm all for that. Yeah, I'll just keep the volume down, guys. I didn't mean to send you on a on a goose chase for that right now. We, we're just, almost solved it, so don't don't worry about it. I can just sit here and die, guys. It's okay. I'll just just you know. I can check. This is really good. Thank you. And hearing my own voice, I don't know how anybody listens to me. I apologize for my stupid voice and. Added to the list of things I hate about myself. I am doing it on one side. I assume. Oh. I assume it's oh, a geez. mono and a stereo thing. Yeah, this is this is a mono input, but yeah. but that's fine. I don't see any way to duplicate it. Um. Yeah, I'll just have it in the one ear. It's like when you do those live feeds on the news, you put the one earpiece in, it's so just disorienting. A little bit. All right. How's that? Great. Yeah. Thank you. Brian, can you, are you going? Uh, it, Yeah. Yeah. I'm able to hear uh, okay. you guys in one ear, so I, I'm good. And if you need any mix changes, let me know because you don't have a knob over there. Sure. Okay. So. Okay, uh, so I've got the set that you, you sent me. Ooh, I got the okay, on the other side. I got the set that you sent me, Andrew, for the show. Brian, do you think do you think the coronavirus spreads with farts? Uh. I think that does anything spread with farts? Pink eye. Pink eye. Laughter. <laughs> Children's smiles. Stank face. <laughs> the, stanky legs. Yeah. the stanky leg. The stanky leg. The stanky actually. leg. Yeah. <laughs> so does. That might when when the when the fart gets too real. You have that stanky leg. Get a little trickle. Trickle down trickle. economics. Oh, God. <laughs> uh. Oh, my goodness. All right. Uh, I think I'm good over here. How's everyone? Everyone yeah. good? set on drinks and bathrooms good. and stuff. Good to go. I yeah. just I hope it's real so I can yell at the next person I see without pants. 
be like, put pants on, you son of a bee. It's herd immunity. You're going to get us all killed. You're farting un unaided into the air. Disgusting. I'm like, who do you run into doesn't wear pants? And I'm like, oh, he lives in Oakland. Yeah, uh, this shit is all over the place. Literally. Oh, shit. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh. <laughs> Turn to play. Uh, video quality is great, guys. Video quality is much, yeah, yeah. Much I think I think we've sharper. yeah we've solved the solved the upload stuff. Uh, cool. Alrighty. Well, uh, then why don't we start with the Weird Things podcast here in three, two. Hello and welcome to the Weird Things podcast. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Mr. Brian Brushwood. Hello, beautiful people. Mr. Justin Robert Young. Hey guys, what's up? It's me. And Bryce Castillo. Hey everybody, that's me. Gentlemen, let's talk about the different places you would not want to socially isolate. Okay. All right. Uh I would say in in the temple from Temple of Doom. Um Good one. Good one. <laughs> you know, I would say uh probably in a place without internet because uh, i'm assuming the temple from temple of doom has internet so a place without right. internet i would uh i would not like that i don't know brian where do you think what's weird is i want to think of something nutty like you know a oil rig at the bottom of the sea or a space station but those people by their very nature are socially isolating that's literally all they do whether there's a giant virus or not yeah yeah, and sure also quiet. you don't want to be on an oil rig because you're just pumping a bunch of useless trash out of the ground. That is no <laughs> worth. <laughs> you're gonna yeah, you're pumping a bunch of oil out. Next thing you know, you owe somebody twenty bucks. Uh yeah. How about this? Imagine you got some you're you're an entrepreneur, you got some money, and one day you see on like eBay or whatever, buy yourself an old west town. We'll call it a ghost town because, you know, ghost town somewhere in California. And you're like, that sounds cool. Who wouldn't want a ghost town? I'll buy a ghost town. So you buy yourself a ghost town. It's great. It's like 60 acres. You got some old dude caretaker for it. All the makings of a great horror story. And he's like, hey, um, you're going to call like, hey, I need to go visit some of my family. Can you come look after the ghost town for me? Which I don't know what that really means because it's a ghost town and it's not like yeah, it's a live town. So you go, all right, I'll go look after the ghost town. It's cool. I'm the guy that spent a million plus bucks on my ghost town. I could have bought a compound in Texas, but no, I bought a ghost town in California. And you're in your ghost town, yeah. minding your business, and then you get the whole, hey, everybody, you got a shelter in place. And your caretaker's like, dude, I can't come check on the ghost town. You're stuck in the ghost town. Well, well, hold on. I mean, it seems like only one of us needs to be stuck in the ghost town and the disease doesn't really care if it's me or the guy whose checks I'm writing. I mean, about these checks. Do you like these checks? Maybe, maybe, maybe I could go live in your house and you could continue to get these checks and you can shelter in your new place, which I like to call the ghost town that I'm paying you to caretake. Yeah, but he's like, I'm an old dude and I'm not allowed to leave wherever I'm at because... I mean, you're right. The easiest way to solve this is to make you into a ghost <laughs> so oh, that you can way, just yeah. stay in the ghost town the with way, all of your own kind. By the way, we're, we're snowed in and no in or out right now. I, wait, so we're both there, in but the only one town. of us can stay? No, no, I'm trapped in the ghost town. You're off in Arizona visiting, you know, Aunt Flanny or whatever. And then the quarantine in place comes in there, and then you're like, oh, we'll just wait a few more days, and then it snows in, and now you're snowed in, and now your caretaker's like not supposed to leave the state. And you're in the middle of nowhere in the snowed in ghost town. Uh, uh okay. So so um you're describing the plot of the shining, you realize. Uh I, you know, for Brent Underwood, he's living the plot of the shining. So so what? so what's what's the story? This is the actual gentleman man forced to isolate alone in ghost town with murderous past after being snowed in. 
Uh, this isn't the same ghost town that we talked so about no, buying on the leave. on the previous episode, what, is it? Possibly. There are quite a few of them. Uh, so, so here we go. This is, uh, uh, I guess, a ghost town here in California, and now all of a sudden it is, uh, 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 you know, this dude just has to stay there, I guess, until either the snow clears and the quarantine lifts. Like, like, or I, <laughs> I guess, does he need both, or, or is it a whichever comes first situation? Uh, yeah, I think that he snowed in. Once it snowed, the, it's no longer snowed, and I think he can just up and leave. But he got kind of trapped there. And I'm going to get to the real tragedy of this. Apparently, it's a phone connection, but not really internet. He says, I've, he said, I've certainly missed out on all the Netflix phenomenon. I keep hearing these memes about Tiger King, and I have no idea what people are talking about. See, that's the real tragedy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Like like that. Imagine if you took away these these uh, uh, streaming touchstones from our lives. Like uh, what what a what a poor, disgusting, wretched world we would have to live in. And this man, surrounded by a history of death, Snowden, he's got no choice. Yeah, you know, apparently uh, he he saw this the town. I guess was on an episode of Ghost Adventures too, which. You know, I think we're all pretty skeptical kind of people, but I could see that all of a sudden being isolated in a ghost town. I think I got about 20 minutes before I start going nuts. I mean, the worst part is, like, I, yeah, I, 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 I might do okay if, like, I had an iPhone. So I, if, if Vine was still around, I'd be all about this. But without Vine, I mean, just put a bullet in my head. So wait, you would you would just be doing those vines where you were both the characters? Yep. You would just be shooting like your your Scorsese version <laughs> of that. Yep. Are you kidding me, man? You got the whole place to yourself. You can get you can get wacky nutty and you don't have to worry about <laughs> nobody seeing nothing. Yeah, but then you're gonna go. There are like, have you edit noticed that there's like there uh sorry, Andrew, go ahead. Yeah, oh sorry, just the overlap. I was just Shutting up to let you finish because of the delay. Oh no, no, no. I, I think I think we got yeah we got a little bit of a, a, a of a delay here. My my I was just gonna bring up the fact that like all of these one person TikTok Vine like that genre is exploding right now in in pandemic. I've seen like a million different versions of little viral videos. Be they like one chick is just like lip syncing to all of her favorite show tunes. One is doing like, you know, uh, uh, all the like things you hear at a San Francisco party. But I've just noticed a, a shocking rise in that genre. I just see Brian's going to be making his videos and it's going to be Brian talking to Brian. He's going to go to upload it and it's going to be like, hey, Brian, what are you doing, Brian? I don't know. I feel like I'm being followed, Brian. And he's going to be like, I don't remember recording this. <laughs> I mean, that He's could be like, arranged. I'm, you. <laughs> I'm told there are certain sleep aids that cause yeah. exactly that to happen. <laughs> that would be, uh, that's, maybe we have a, man, I think maybe we just need to do a reality show and this is over. We're going to just put Brian in this town and see what happens. <laughs> I mean, as long as there's a saloon there, <laughs> then then I'm good. I can make my own money. Oh, I can buy my own drinks. There, Brian. I can win them off myself. I can also be the bartender. Yeah. We're gonna oh my, like dude, creep in Brian, like, you know, Brian, weird you have music. to you 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 have to shoot. I know that right now you have hit you have struck gold with teaching magic to Josie, and that is the uh immediate future of uh scam stuff. But for God's sakes, please shoot the quarantine version where you play all the characters of, as long as I, I, I like everything about this shoot. except for if i'm going to be true to the shining there's a certain n-word that i'm supposed to say that i'm not going to be cool with <laughs> like uh, uh talking about correcting uh, there, there there were other bar patrons that were corrected <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i would just love uh just love you just doing because you could do you could probably knock that out in about 20 minutes you know all the beats of every scape school episode you know all the things that all the people would say you could probably if you literally just walked through it 
uh, have enough raw video that people could edit their own version of an old school I mean, game. I'll tell, I'll with tell you, you what, playing all the parts. I, I know you're not watching Westworld, but if you watch last night's episode, it seems like uh, if they could do it, I could do it. Just a whole bunch of Brian's at different phases uh, doing some scam school stuff. Oh, uh, dude, I uh, but roll with the baby new expression, guys. What's that? Uh-huh. When monkeys fly kites, when monkeys fly kites, guys, how about that expression? Do you like that? I mean, that would imply that monkeys can't fly kites, but I'm going to guess that the next thing you're going to tell me is that monkeys have been seen flying kites. <laughs> Apparently, yes. In uh, India, of all places, there's a video of a monkey caught on camera flying a kite on a rooftop. <laughs> How? Like, it's the end, folks. It's the end. Oh, and it's a good kite, too. It's Andy one of those down stunt the kites. Microphone. Is that, is that, oh my God. Oh my God. That looks very big for a Is monkey. that a real monkey? I, I yeah, we're, we're getting a little bit of a, 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 a video thing here, but oh, I guess I can see it now. Is that a monkey? I mean, if you told me it was a Sasquatch, I would be immediately suspicious. So I don't know why I'm suddenly not suspicious just because we're saying monkey. It's got a re- it's got really long monkey well, arms this- uh, when it when it grabs it at the very end. Yeah, and so it this does is have a that monkey that has hunch. lots of monkeys. They're very curious there, and the monkey is like pulling on a string, pulling. It's not like it said, "I'm going to go fly the kite," and it threw the kite up in there because it watched Mary Poppins. But it does but it look like, like he's in the middle the of doing some crazy down. stunt kite stuff. It looks like, uh, but but maybe it's just a one string kite. But at first glance, it looks like he's doing the the two strings, like he's about to go kiteboarding or something. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm not going to so, be impressed until I see a go. monkey playing devil sticks. <laughs> uh, uh, well, I'll tell you what That's amazing But only n- close to as amazing As the feeling you'll have Rushing through your veins When you head on over to Patreon.com Slash weird things Obviously these are turbulent times But the one thing that you do know for sure Is that we are here for you Each and every Tuesday Giving you the science and paranormal news That you crave which is why we ask you we to keep now, this thing going at patreon.com slash weird things. And now for another PSA. Uh-oh. Uh, one of our sponsors wants us to remember, hey, guys, we're still out here. Apparently, a man in North Carolina decided to go in the garden and do some yard work. He figured he'd pick up a big black, black garden hose. Can you guess what happened next? Uh, he watered, the, he fixed the cable. No. Oh. No. Sadly, no. Not this time. Uh, he it found out that the hose was snake. a big old snake. Oh, no! <laughs> this time delayed <laughs> Q&A is great. <laughs> I, I haven't seen it. Like, I, Sorry, sorry. What's the, what's the reveal? <laughs> uh no he found out it was a snake it was a snake <laughs> how big a, a snake PSA. six foot uh is it an, an unusual snake like an inv- invasive species or it was a non-venomous eastern rat snake so Ooh, just it's free not a snake. he should have been happy that's a free snake Non-venomous <laughs> eats rats. I mean, what's not to love? Of, how many times in our lives can we say that? You know, uh, my mom told me, "Look, you can go into business, but there's no free snakes in life." And and here he is living the dream, getting the uh, snakes from heaven. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Would, would would you capture that, throw it in a cage, or yeah. just just gawk at it and hope it doesn't come back? <laughs> cage with big bars you just slide right through them. <laughs> see you later <laughs> but he gets a tank yeah that'll work yeah uh, I, uh, live and let live in my neighbor's yard 
<laughs> live somewhere very far that's away. That's going over the fence. I yeah, mean, that's going over the fence. Wait, <laughs> the you, kids are playing in the kiddie pool. So I, uh, uh, somebody was like, we, we caught a mouse inside the house and everyone's like, uh, if you just put it outside, it's going to find its way back. I'm like, dude, if it does, it's uh, freaking Lewis and Clark. Cause I drove like four miles to drop that thing off. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we going, Brian? Where are we going? <laughs> I'm gonna yeah, take you for a screw walk, that little snake. mouse. Okay, or, Brian. Or I'll tell you what, maybe, maybe it, maybe it uh, goes on the adventure of a lifetime. You never know. Either way, it's a gift. It's a gift to the snake. It's a free trip. You know, I like to think of you as the Mother Teresa of snakes. Yeah. It's just like Brian's mouse. You know, could be like Stuart Little. Get an airplane. <laughs> I mean, that would yeah. be, or, or uh, put put it in a, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, attach it to the drone, <laughs> just fly it away. You're like, what, what an exciting <laughs> life you're having. <laughs> Imagine the story that mouse would have to tell all the other mice, and then this spaceship picked me <laughs> up and <laughs> flew me out here. Yeah. <laughs> no, guys, stop making fun. It's whatever. <laughs> Like, 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 uh, uh, after the whole thing's about to end, I, uh, yeah, the very last thing I do is take a toothpick and poke its butt. They're like, now they won't believe you. Get out of here. <laughs> oh. Whiskers has some weird fantasy about, you know, big people and probing. Oh, geez. Here comes Nutty Whiskers with his story. He's a little mouse alcoholic now, you know. <laughs> oh, nobody believes me about the time I got him. <laughs> some little mouse Larry King show. So tell us about the experience. It's, 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 uh, uh, it's mouse Randy Quaid. That's what. <laughs> <laughs> Remember me, boys? I'm back. <laughs> uh, my niece actually sent me that gif from Independence Day where Quaid is like going to the ship. And I'm like, I bet she has no idea what this movie's from. So, I mean, luckily um, enough for how he looks in that so, role, you don't really uh, need a lot of context to know that this is definitely a crazy person. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Randy Quaid, period. Uh, so some cool news is it's scheduled hopefully for the end of next month. May 27th is the plan for the uh, NASA SpaceX Crew Dragon to fly astronauts to the International Space Station. So they've locked that date down and said that's when we're going to try to make it happen. Oh, man, I'm so clinched up right now. Wait, like, wait, this when? is the big when is one. It? When is the it? The 27th. What, two weeks? Or, or Wait, next week? Did you say May? May 27th. Oh, May 27th, just May over a 27th. month. May 27th. Oh man, dude, I am so puckered dude, right now. They pick they pick the right time to get the hell out of here. I mean, the I good mean, news I, is I they're all they're all in like, quarantine already. Yeah. Yeah. Let's blow this popsicle stand. This place sucks. <laughs> yep. So this will be very exciting. This is gonna be uh the first launch of Americans on an American spacecraft since the shuttle and the first new spacecraft for, you know, from America launch since you know, like what, 1981 when the first shuttle launched. So, you know, inspiring, but also sort of a little depressing when you think about how long it's been since we've, you know, had a new vehicle to put people in space. Meanwhile, Boeing with their Starliner, which is their project, they're, they're part of the, the NASA crew program. They have agreed to do another test of the Starliner without people on board because Every time they've done tests before, there were some major issues and sometimes software related, et cetera, like parachutes not deploying or not firing at the right point, whatever. And then Boeing finally said, and I think with a lot of pressure from NASA, like, yeah, no, we'll go ahead and test this thing again before we put astronauts on it. I mean, yay for testing, not so much yay for delays. Yeah. Well, it's just been, you know, it's yeah. it's problematic. You know, they've had both SpaceX and Boeing have had some challenges, but Boeing, when they were supposed to do the intercept of the National Space Station, it didn't happen. And then afterwards, that's what we talked about. We found out there was another error that took place that could have been uh, mission threatening. So I think they're kind of just an abundance of caution to have decided, you know, they should test again. And also there's been so much pressure on Boeing considering everything else that's going on there. So 
probably a very prudent choice for them to eat the several hundred million dollar cost on that. Wow. Yeah, you know, it's it's kind of crazy yeah. to think of that 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 there are uh, you know companies like Boeing that have had you know for so long just these like titanic untouchable money fountains, and they certainly still do, but they have rarely been more threatened than when you look at what the situation we're looking at now is with kind of twin disruptions. Yeah, and it's been you know the the external and also the internal is that. When you're the primary contractor and you've been that way for 20 years, you probably look at your business differently. You know, you don't really look at your business as so much as delivering products, as much as this program to fund the deliverables are often, nah, we'll figure that part out later on. And, you know, in a system that sort of, you look at times where they have fallen below expectations, yet they were given bonuses and stuff because of whatever political support they have, like, we didn't deliver it. Yeah, we're giving a hundred million dollar performance bonus, anyways, because reason you look at what that incentivizes, and I think this is where we end up. But we'll see. You know, amazingly talented engineers there, incredibly talented people at Boeing, just brilliant people across the space industry. And you hope that you know, with the right organizational structure and the right mission, that you know we can see everybody kind of just doing their best. Yeah. So, Gentlemen, do you want to do some picks? Yeah, uh, I uh, I went back and I got the kids to watch uh, the old uh, District Nine. District Nine is a remarkable, oh, cool. fantastic. On paper, there's no reason any of my kids should enjoy any of it. On paper, I, I think one of the most remarkable aspects to me is uh, that in all of the marketing, as a fan, as somebody who is excited about it, uh, I everything about this show was only marketed as the first third of the movie where it's a mockumentary where it talks about the social implications of what happens when alien refugees have to integrate with society. And it reminded me of the setup for uh, the movie and television show alien nation only with a bunch more bug like aliens and stuff. So I was fully ready to, to buckle in and, and it's been long enough that I don't mind giving out the spoilers uh, 30 minutes into the movie, it becomes the fly. And then it just stays the fly yeah. for about 30 more minutes. And then it becomes a freaking surreal, awesome, full on action movie, completely unexpected. Uh, it is one of the greatest gifts in movie making that, uh, that I've ever seen. I uh, liked it an, an awful lot. And, um, if you're not familiar, there's a short movie that uh, Neil Blomkamp put together before this uh, called Alive in Joburg, where one of the tricks that he did was he talked to people telling them that they were doing an actual documentary on some local uh, ethnicity that hates some other local ethnicity. And he said, just talk about them. And so they're, they're saying stuff like, oh, they're filthy, they're dirty, they don't belong here, they just showed up, nobody asked them. I, I, look, I don't hate them, I just want, they should just leave, they should just leave. And uh, as a result, you get this very surreal, very human, very authentic uh, delivery from people who are not actors, and uh, only it's recontextualized yeah. to make it sound like they're talking about uh, other space aliens. Uh, so much fun, it's so, so good. Yeah, the fact the fact that it ends by turning into bad boys or uh, you know, another mismatched buddy cop, uh, you know, finale is just such a great treat. And uh, man, Neil Blomkamp, great debut. <sighs> oh, doggone it! I, I, I'm still waiting. I'm still waiting. Uh, hey, man. Uh, just, yeah. I mean, uh, uh, all I'm saying is great debut. Amazing I mean, debut. Just remember, before Mad Max Fury Road, uh, what's his name's previous movie was Babe Two: Pig in the City. So maybe we get a Blomkamp Renaissance. Who knows? I mean, wait are you are you slandering Babe Two: Pig in the City because that movie ruled? <laughs> <laughs> I would know. I would never eat the filthy movie. Yeah. Well, that'll do, Brushwood. <laughs> Uh, I, I got a pick. So, uh, you know, trolling through the movies on, on iTunes on Friday. And uh, I came across a movie that I didn't get a chance to see in theaters. It was uh, The Gentleman, 
the Guy Ritchie movie, the, the return of Guy Ritchie to his roots of clever British crime. Uh, so Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels, Snatch, uh, the real rock and roll. Uh, this is him uh, uh, back here with a great cast, including uh, uh, Matthew McConaughey and Hugh Grant. And it rules. I really, really enjoyed it. It's everything that I loved about those Guy Ritchie movies. He has not lost anything off his fastball. Fractured storytelling, British people calling each other the C words, gunplay, murder, all of it. It's all here. They love that C word there. They really do. Oh, boy, do they. Uh, Bryce? Uh, yeah, I got a pick. Uh, I, uh, over the weekend, got a chance to rewatch a movie I saw in theaters uh, and had a had a really good time watching it in theaters and seeing it a second time at home when I could pause and take a look at stuff and, and kind of recontextualize the beginning with the end in mind. Uh, I really enjoyed rewatching Midsummer, uh, which is on uh, Amazon Prime right now. Ha- ha- any of you guys get a chance to see Midsummer at all? I, I, I say this completely unironically. I am afraid to. From everything I've heard about it, I am too. I am afraid to watch that movie, so I have not. Yeah, it's 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 not like a big gore fest, right? It's not like Saw or like gore porn or anything. But there, are the 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 little moments where it it you know kind of does really horrific stuff, they are fast and and very very intense, uh, and it creates a it's very trippy because it's there's also just like a lot of positivity and a lot of. Uh, it, it's it's a very interesting horror movie and I still haven't seen Hereditary Ari Aster's previous work from this um, and I still want to go see that too but uh, Midsummer, uh, uh, good recommend if you're looking for something really scary cool my nice. pick is the video game or the VR game um, Pistol Whip I don't know if you guys have played this uh, no, no I'm not familiar uh so pistol whip came out about five months ago and like in the vr you know news kind of blew up because the reviews on it were fantastic it's on multiple platforms i've been playing it on the quest and imagine like john wick the video game and so what you are is you're stationary but actually the world moves past you so it feels like you're actually running you know, through this environment and you got your guns and things come out at you and sort of the, the, the environment moves to the music, things thump and you get guys just pop out at you from everywhere. And it's really intense. I, I, it's one of my f- favorite VR games ever now. That's awesome. It's just, yeah, I highly, highly recommend it, it on the quest store. It's got like five out of five as far as stars. Uh, it's one of the things I got at the moment I got into it, you know, they, they did a really cool thing, the way that the on rail sort of aspect, which has been done before, but here is really cool. So you're there and you're just flying through this thing and no motion sickness and stuff. And these guys keep popping out at you and you're just, you know, shooting. They do kind of a cool thing where in you know the regular mode, it's not about accuracy. You just sort of aim in their direction and they die, which is fine because there's so many of them coming at you. And from the name pistol whip, if they get close to you, just pistol whip them. That's hilarious. Yeah. So um, if you're looking for something fun for VR, it's great. And, and again, I'm going to do recommend again, if you're anybody out there looking to get into VR, the quest is great. The quest is great. It's not going to be as great as, you know, a fuller gaming rig that's plugged into it. But if you just want something fun and no cables and nothing, that's, you know, 400 bucks that you can do a lot of great stuff there. And it's actually, you know, probably the biggest VR platform maybe right now i think it's like we're as far as when it comes down to sales and stuff uh you know so it's certainly even though it's not the fastest it's one of these things like so many people have them now uh, and am, am, am i right you know, in understanding that point. you can attach a quest to a pc if you want to play a beefier game like half-life alex Yep, yep, and through there, there's the the beta link for that. I read some reviews of some people who played it that way, and they said that you know it was you know a little more janky. It wasn't as good as just a straight up link because of some sort of optimization thing. So bear that in mind. But yeah, there's like you can just plug a, a USB A or whatever USB C cable into it, and now you can plug it into your gaming PC. Very cool. But um, do you guys played with the Quest? No, I, I mean I haven't had. Uh, if I'm going to do anything, I I'll just not, hop no. in the Vive. Yeah. 
Although, although I tried to buy buy the new uh, well, the, Valve Index, but it um, uh, it, it said that there was an eight week lead time. That's how long. Uh, it turns out that when the whole world is in wow. quarantine, people really want a Valve Index. People want some VR. Yeah, the neat the neat thing about the Quest is just it's like you just grab it, pop into your living room, or go to some open space and you do it. Like where you are right now, like. I, I think that you would find there would be a lot of situations where you would you'd probably do VR more often because of the fact of like, oh, I can just pop this on and go into the studio and go screw around with it. Mm-hmm. Um, um, you know, you're you know, you're used to the higher graphics and stuff. And so I think that there would be a difference there. But a lot of the stuff is just really some of the ports are fantastic and really well done. And some things just don't notice the difference. But um, I love it for that because like. It's just easy, like, you know, every night when I try to keep active, I just pop the thing on and spend like an hour and a half doing Beat Saber or whatever. And, you know, just not having to be hooked up to my computer is great. Yeah, it's going to be pretty wild. I mean, I can't but, imagine we're more yeah. than a year or two from a, a shocking leap forward of like full on going outdoors where it's like the cameras are good enough that it can map out everything and then remap your world so that anything you might possibly trip over will be re-rendered in game and you could go out for a full day with just this thing over your face and and hike for miles only it's a uh, you know some crazy crystalline forest with hobgoblins that jump out at you or whatever but sure you know uh apple just bought i think next to vr because with apple's augmented approach you know where you're, you're laying stuff over your real environment they've been you know that's an interesting that was an interesting content acquisition for them and and i think you're i think you're absolutely right they just did a thing now with a quest 2 where you can when you put it on they allow like developers to integrate your real environment into it too it's a black and white uses black and white cameras to do the tracking but you know that's happened now there have been some people who've taken what it is now because it's got it's got what's called arena scale so you can take your quest into a gymnasium and go all the way around it and they've actually added support now for multiple quests in the same environment to share tracking position, mm-hmm. which, uh, you know, going to be, it'd be great. And the, the thing about the quest, which is interesting is like, I love it. It's great. That's like a two year old, a three year old Snapdragon processor. You know what somebody could do right now using a much more current Damn. mobile processor, you know, insane. So, you know, but. If you're looking for VR, I, 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 my friends that like, I have a group of friends that we all have quests and it, to us, it was like, ah, this is, this is the Batman begins now for VR for us, for not having to be connected to a computer. Right. Hell yeah. Gentlemen, thank you very much. It's been weird. Uh, so it sounds like, it sounds like internet crap, crap the bed again. Yeah, pretty early on. Can we? Uh, oh yeah, baby. Um, then maybe instead of after things, I can give a call to Spectrum and see if we're able to get anything done. Mm. Um, yeah. Why don't you go do that? Let me see if we can use my phone, I guess, to tether so that we have. Uh, yeah. I, uh, t- uh, let me know if the T-Mobile speed test is because I ran the speed test off of off of the AT and T one and it was able to get. Um, like a, a 150 down and 40 up or 50 up. Sure, but know, if you have to go call Spectrum. Yeah. Well, then uh, let me know what else to check. Um, uh, all right, here I'm. I'm, I'm going to run in 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 and chew them out. Bye. Okay. Uh, uh, we're uh, guys. We're gonna let's go to. Bye. We'll have to go to Skype audio for uh, for this because the Opal is hardwired. Yeah. Um. So. Okay. Uh. In fact, I'm just gonna hang up for the Skype call. Disconnecting. And yeah, and I'll, I'll call you guys in the Skype call in a bit. Uh, and uh, everyone who is listening here, uh, we may go dark here for a moment, uh, but we'll be back here in just a minute. Uh, the Twitch stream might stop for just a second here, so everybody refresh if need be. Uh, let's see if we can do both. Hopefully we can do both. I would love it if we could do both things. Get you a man who can do both. <laughs> Thank you for being very patient, everybody. It's... uh. Very frustrating. Uh, our heart goes out to you, man. I we were just talking about before, oh, there we like, go. I see you. yeah, how frustrating this has got to be for you guys because you, it's you do everything you're supposed to, and then your internet provider and all that. And, it's and like, then, do, do, do. The, the, the magic cord stops giving magic, right?
you know, like it, it's, I don't know. We, we, we talk so much about, you know, everyone, people are working from home and going remote and, uh, it is, you know, making it very difficult for us to do that. Uh, now with, with either everybody online or just, just generally bad service. So, um, yeah, so I don't think this is going to be a great a great uh, version of the stream either. But it, internet internet causes COVID. Internet causes COVID. Everybody in Austin, what what? <laughs> oh jeez. Uh, so you guys want to try to do just a a, a little after things here? Yeah. Well, I know I know I know we still need to talk about uh, the 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 success of Andrew's book launch. Oh right. Uh, okay. Sure. And. Uh, I gotta pull this up now because I, I can't. We don't have because I had to unplug this thing from the network, so now I don't have my multi mouse nice stuff. Ah, but uh, all right, cool. Well, let's uh, let's do some after things then. How about it? Let me catch you in. Let's go. All yeah. right, let's get started in three, two. Hello and welcome to After Things. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Mr. Justin Robert Young. Hey, friends, it's me, Bryce Castillo. Hey, everybody, that's me. Everything's going great, and we're having just a fun day here on the good 420 weed today. Hello. Oh, I still don't know that reference, but it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. You guys will explain it to me later. Yeah. Hey, uh, you know what I do know is the gaming newsletter, the video game newsletter by Mr. Bryce, who's been killing it. I've really enjoyed it, Bryce. Congrats for keeping this thing going. Thank and you very much. It's just been fun to watch you just run with this thing and see it develop and, and adapt and, you know, the new content. Yeah, thank you. It's I, I, I've been very pleased with, we, you know, you gave me some really good feedback uh, a couple weeks back. Um, and I've seen, you know, response rates or click rates go up. And um, so I appreciate it. Um, well, I, and I was about, I just want to talk about, yeah, about you. Like, I just, man, like what you've been doing there and... Uh, and you do things in it, which I like the fact you're playing around. Like you started doing the, was it the, uh, like the two sentence video game reviews? Yeah, that's right. Of uh, cause love like, that. The, love that. there are like a hundred million Apple arcade games out there and you don't really, need, because if you're in it, you get those games for free, like a buffet service. And so you don't need too much pushing to be, to, to tell someone like, Hey, go play this high quality game. You just kind of need to know what it is. Uh, and a link to it. So yeah, that's 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 been a fun thing to 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 do more of the, the shorter reviews. Uh, I am going to make a suggestion now. You ready? Okay, ready. Um, and this is it's an easy one, and it's one that I I try to do periodically. And do a coming up at the top of it. Go hey, if you like this, share this on Twitter. Put mm. that up prominent. And I found that, like, I periodically, one of the things, we'll talk about what, like, with my book in a moment, but all every few days, I'm like, hey, could you guys retweet this? And I'll get 20, 30 retweets. People retweet it, you know, and, and that's all of a sudden extends out beyond my network. And I see some other people pick that stuff out there. And if people really like a thing and you go, oh, yeah, if you like this, just share it with people. Mm -hmm. If they value it, they'll go, oh, cool, I want to share this because I value this. So don't don't be shy about asking to do that because it's if they really like it they'll feel like oh cool i can give this gift to this thing i enjoy to other people uh so. yeah uh, yeah i because justin you do a similar thing where you you ask people to reply to your emails is that right yeah yeah i mean part of it is that obviously there is the kind of constant uh trying to stay out of the spam folder trying to stay in the the inbox but also i i tend to think that it just makes uh it makes it richer. It, it mm -hmm. makes it more of a community thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and and both in terms of the algorithm and I think the general health of the community, uh, it's it's just good when people want to have something to say. It's good for you to know that you're creating something that is inspiring conversation. Uh, yeah, I'm, I, yeah. I, that, that's definitely a, a, a next step I'd like to look into. You know, I've been sharing because you can share a permalink to the emails on on Twitter uh, uh, when I when I write them and so I've had to I've kind of had to do uh, I've had to add in a sign up link into the emails because I've I've had people like click on it on Twitter and say oh cool now where do I sign up 
because uh, they you know they're they're seeing it's kind of having to do double duty um but yeah i'd, I'd like to do like uh last week or, or a couple of weeks ago we were doing like people would send in just the things that they're playing and what they liked about it and and that that was a lot of fun you know having kind of a back and forth conversation and talking about similar um similar titles so uh thank you i'm i'm, I'm looking forward to continuing to change and iterate and um you know, try to try to make it feel something feel feel unique for what it is. Well, and and I'm just even saying, not even the user feedback part. I'm just saying, like like you're you have that you did that's a great thing you did the Nautilus putting there for people to sign up for. But like, try it on top on top a couple times. Like, hey everybody, I'm just trying to increase you know the people who do, think of somebody you know who might like this, forward it to them, mm -hmm. and you would be you will get I guarantee you will get a big bump. You will absolutely get a big bump. Okay. And periodically doing that because the beautiful thing is it's like. Like right now, my book is free for Amazon Prime members, right? So I get to push that out there without asking money for people, yeah. which I love. That That's easy for me to push because I can say, hey, everybody, check out my book. By the way, for Amazon Prime, it's free. I'm not asking anybody to buy anything. And I and it's easy to push things that are free. So like you're eating, you're, you're, and think about that different than a product you're selling. Mm -hmm. You know, there is a relationship between them, but really it's, there is nothing. They just click a thing and now they get this thing for free. So don't be afraid to, to ask people like, hey, I'm trying to spread this. Could you help me out? You guys have been like, think of it as your tight little small community here, but put that up top a couple times and say, if you know somebody might like this, do this. Because people, we make assumptions about what people are going to do. We make assumptions, well, if they know somebody like it, they'll do it. No, we've got a million things in our mind and we never even considered the fact of like, oh, I can help Bryce out by sending this to like, I know five friends who might like this, you know? And then um, if you put that in their head, people go, oh yeah. So yeah, just put that thought out there. And, and I think, you know, on the creator side, I think we get a little, like it's, it, it it kind of feels it feels tough to ask people because you don't want to ask people for too much or if you ask constantly because I mean that's like that's like the YouTuber joke right like like comment and subscribe like those words are it is such good hygiene to do that sort of thing that the words have become meaningless because everyone says it constantly and so like I look on websites that have like the social share icons like tweet tweet and Facebook and put on Orkut and ask, send it to oh. VT like you know that's that's there because it's good to tell people to ask that, but it's systematized and it's so obtrusive and, and meaningless. And those, yeah, the problem with those is there is, it's the, the, the people like, no, I, I checked off the list of asking people and you go like, oh yeah, you have a bottom, you have the, you know, like at the bottom of a blog post, they have the language. Like one, nobody sees that people don't know what to do. Give, I am very much a big believer in direct, calls to action to things that can be done right now and telling people exactly what I need you to do, what would be great for you to do. Mm. And the problem, and like if problem with YouTube is like, oh, comments or subscribe. Somebody's like, I guess if I have something to say, I will. The best ones are like, hey, what's your favorite game you're playing this week? Oh, oh you know, people will write that out. You know, yeah. ask YouTubers who say, give a specific thing to say in the comments. Like, hey, what was your favorite 80s thing? Something relevant, whatever. Boom, you'll get 10 times the response because all of a sudden everybody there's some there's a there's a way to think about kind of in psychology. And the idea is that like if I want a behavior for somebody, if I want somebody to do a thing, if I put a thought into their head, it's easier for them to complete it. OK. Mm -hmm. And if I say, oh, you know, uh, I you know, my favorite 80s movie is, you know, other than Star Wars is Blade Runner. 80s movies are cool. What's your favorite 80s movie? Everybody's thinking of this now. Yeah. And then I'm like, if you have one, put it in the comments. Well, okay, I'll put it in the comments. If you're like, just put a comment, won't work the same way. You yeah. know, it's like, you know, try not to think of an elephant, you know. So we uh, we we get a lot of success out of that with cord killers, you know, whenever we have mm -hmm. a topic that kind of goes long or where we don't resolve something or it's kind of open ended, we, you know, make a point to call it out. Hey, if you have a thing, send it to cord killers at Gmail and then you know, we, we do those tend to be the things that we get more emails about is when we say, hey, here's this hotly this this big topic for us. Uh, now you chime in and we have that as a part of the show, you know, every week. Uh, and and like we get we get a lot of that with Night Attack, right? Like right now for, for the past little while, we've been asking people kind of how they found out about the guys and the show. And we read we read people's stories, you know, pretty much every week now. And um you know, so yeah, having having more direct, a more direct ask uh, is is definitely more valuable. Yeah, it's the fill in the blank because there's there's things that I've noticed that 
if you send an email to five people, like five people in a group, hey, can somebody give me an answer to this, blah, 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 mm-hmm. either it's going to get answered immediately or never because yeah. either uh, you know somebody will be right in the moment to do it or they'll go, somebody else has it, somebody else has got it. I don't need to take care of this. Yeah. And it's one of these things that we often think about like – Okay, you know, somebody else will care. There's a lot of these little things we have to think about how they do it. And one of the things I think is super helpful is if, like Bryce, if I said, you know, Bryce, I'm working on a new video game. I know you're really busy right now. And so I'm not going to, I won't bother you this week, but next week I want to talk to you about this video game. And I've got this really cool idea for, you know, a first person shooter that takes place, <laughs> I'm making this stuff in a forest where you shoot mice out of the guns. Oh. Um, don't worry about it right now, but next week I want to talk to you about it. Mm-hmm. Suddenly you're thinking about it, you're, picking, you're <laughs> yeah. making your own image of it, and then, yeah, I mean, it, you know, priming, priming the pump, so to speak, really, really helps out a lot, especially in an open-ended scenario like that, where you're looking, you're, you're gonna ask a question or, or what have you. Yeah, mm-hmm. you're like, you're basically half pitching. But speaking of half pitching, I mean, the the newsletter is what it is. We need to talk about how the girl beneath the sea is doing, Andrew. Yeah. Well, Sloan and Pearson seems to be doing fine. Uh, <laughs> so Girl Beneath the Sea is my new novel for a new series. I'm doing the Underwater Investigative Unit. Um, and it debuted on April 1st. And I got I I got very, very lucky. And I will tell you, I am very much a believer that there is situations in your life where uh, takes you part of the way. But opportunity, other people, and lucky, lucky situations. And I got lucky. And that was uh, Amazon has this thing called like uh, Prime Reads or Prime First, which is basically people who put out books will go to Amazon and will pitch to have their book part of this. And what it is is for the first for one month, the book is given away free to Amazon Prime members. Now, I as an author, I get a little bit of money for this, but really it's a way to get kind of readership for it. And so there is a pitch. Amazon then goes through there and selects which books are going to be on that list. And so I was pitched and then I got selected. And so my book was on that list that went out to a hundred billion Amazon prime members of like, Hey, you can get this book for free. Yeah. And again, I do it because not because it's a payday from that. I do it because it's a great way to bring people into the funnel of reading the book and then hopefully getting the next book and my other books. Yeah. So we launched April 1st. And by the end of the day, the book was number one on all of Kindle books on Amazon. All the entire Kindle store was number one. Stayed that way for eight days. Then these damn kids wanting to read, <laughs> people wanting to improve themselves. It's now we're 20 days in. It's number five. And I, I could be more thrilled. The other books that are ahead of it are Kindle Unlimited books. Like it's Harry Harry Potter's ahead of it. Have seven Habits for Highly you know, Effective People. The right. Bad Seed. It's great. I'm so thrilled to be there. I'm like, I'm right between Sorcerer's Stone and Chamber of Secrets. And that's like, I've been like that for, you know, a couple weeks. And like, okay. I might go on like a month. So, and also Amazon Charts. It was the number six most sold book on Amazon. Wow. Uh, and I was like number 12 the week before. Then I went up last week to number six most sold book, which is like, there because of the way New York Times bestseller list sort of looks at ebooks and things like this. It's not exactly. Yeah, yeah. Let me let, let me just. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll explain uh, as I best understand it. You can correct me, Andrew, if I get any detail wrong. But uh, effectively, the New York Times bestseller list, which is universally understood in terms of fame to be this uh, place of glory, the way that they do that is number one murky, and number two uh, can be boiled down to they call like. 20 to 50 bookstores in New York City and they ask them what people are uh, uh, what, what people are buying and, and there's ways to game it it's it's a little uh, shady so Amazon creates their own rankings but these are their definitive New York Times bestseller style uh, rankings and you could objectively say and I would that at least there is more data and more verifiability that goes into these rankings because Amazon does uh, have such a dominant position in terms of book sales, not only physical, but also in terms of ebooks. So the the fact that you are in the top on the list at all is insane. The fact that you started at 12 is fantastic. And the fact that you've now gone up 
to six is something that is uh, uh, certainly to be commended and and that that does not happen easily. But this is not something that just kind of falls out of one's pocket. It means that the book is good. It means that it's finding a readership. And the fact that you have as many reviews as you do at, at four and a half stars shows the quality. Yeah. And and 4.6, 4.6. <laughs> there we go. The, the Amazon charts, so they have like most sold and they also have like a most read chart, which I think is really interesting because when you have like this free element to it, right? You want to hope that people are doing step two and and it looks like it it debuted at fifteen, which is fantastic. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, that that that's fantastic because it, it means that not not it's not just people you know vacuuming up all of the free things that Amazon gives them, but but you're actually getting read and and you know from the reviews, people are really enjoying it. Yeah, that's the most gratifying part. Exactly, it's not just people go, oh, I like this cover. Let me you know, let me pick it up and whatever. So, right. um, this happened because. I've got great support. You know, I've got uh, my publishers, uh, Thomas and Mercer, Mercer, which is owned by Amazon Publishing. Uh, fantastic team there. Work with my agent, mm-hmm. who for me for years and really wanted to partner me with me at Amazon because she thought they would make a really great fit because of where my audience was, where you know the the kind of books I did, whatever. And and I'm lucky. I I am like 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 yeah, I think I'm a good writer you know but there's a lot of really good writers out there and and that there's not a shortage of good writers out there and you just you know i'm just grateful i'm just very very grateful because you you know i can i I can look at the uh you know the the doctor strange amulet and i can see a different universe where things played out differently where i didn't have the people who were helping me that helped me so yeah and you know and like it starts with you know, Justin, you know, to be honest with you, it started with this guy listening to me, you know, all my stupid stories. And then one day I'm like, this poor kid, I, I all I do is I tell him, I have an idea for this. I have an idea for this. And he's like, great. It's the guy with ideas who never does anything about them. He never said that. But I hearing myself, I go, I'm that guy. No, I don't be that guy. no, 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 no. Come on, be be real. We would probably get about twenty five percent of the way through the idea before we would abandon it. But there was always we would always start. There was always a concrete start to the idea. Yeah. Uh, but but look, I mean, I think that there was, um, you know, we we've talked about this kind of origin story a few times, but it bears mentioning again in 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 um, in in a happy moment in the sun. Uh, but you were in a field that was really, really dependent on a lot of other people in television. And, and while television was its own track, I think not only, uh, you really dedicating yourself to writing and leveraging the platforms that you had to make it more of a success was not only, uh, a, a real model to follow in terms of, uh, what it takes to dedicate yourself to make yourself better. And then also, uh, how you can uh, uh, find an audience like uh, you, you developing as an author and, and now you are, uh, you are not just an author. You are somebody that looks at things from a, a much more meta perspective. It's not just, you know, writing the thing that you think is, is, you know, on your mind right now, you are thinking in terms of bigger arcs and franchises and, and you now have business partners that are recognizing that. And that's, that's, you know, uh, a, an overnight success 10 years in the making. Yeah. And, and something like, like the, the Amazon fir- first, first reads program, right. Where people kind of get a first taste for free. Like, I think that's so smart from, from a logistical standard or standpoint where, you know, I, you know, my understanding is, is that, you know, publishers really like are really interested in series and they really want uh, not just one book, but something that can be more than one book and have fate can develop a, a fan following and can have continuity and serialization and stuff. And, uh, this is a, a very strong, I think business industry move to get people in the door. You know, we, we see this not just with, not, not just with, with books. You see it with games a lot, right? With, um, here's, we're giving you the first, the game free and they want people to buy the DLC or the next game or, or whatever it is. Uh, I you think know- it's really smart. I think with also there is a commitment that in art more, and this is a lot of what I got from Andrew working with him initially is, and I wound up to kind of take him to the go game, but it's like, you have to be really, really serious if you want to be in a silly business. Right. And we can all agree that, you know, although it is, takes a lot of effort, 
you know, writing stories, being creative, being an artist, you know, it can be a bit of a silly business, but you need to, you need to put in that much more effort and time so you can separate yourself from something that a lot of people will do for free because they, they want to try their hand at it or, or they have these ideas in their head. Uh, Andrew, I know from, from the earliest, you know, has always kind of thought about, and, and we have always agreed you know, that, that there's the, the, the Steve Jobsian quote of like real artist ship. So it's like the, the, the point is not necessarily the, the idea you had in your head. The, the point isn't necessarily, is it exactly perfect? The point is, can you get into a position where you're making it at the highest possible quality while delivering it to the people that want to get it? And that's something that I think as has certainly uh, uh, been a, a huge success for Andrew in his writing career. And it, it's something that I think about all the time in terms of like, all right, what am I do? like a, like you, you can't skip episodes, right? You got to always make things that are, that are good. You got to always like continue to improve. Uh, there is a relationship with the audience that needs to be maintained and I think uh, uh, this is a a sign that Andrew has has ground has, has grinded out on putting out great books and working really hard on them, but also making sure that they show up on time, making sure that they are are uh, you know listening to what the audience has has thought about and and improving. And that's to me, this is this is not. I mean, you can point to a bunch of different reasons as to why this popped, uh, but nothing is possible unless you have learned all these lessons coming into it. You know, a thing that I've, I've thought a lot about is the, you know, we often look at like, hey, how do you make it? How do you make it? How do you make it? Which is an important question to ask. And the, and the answer is one is you make a thing that, you know, and that's, you know, so many people talk about. And I look at, I look at my friends who are working jobs they're not happy with, who would love to be more involved in the creative industries and the difference between them and let's say my friends are doing creative stuff is my friends are creative stuff. One day said, I'm just going to make the thing and ship it. I'm just going to put it out there and I'm going to keep doing it and repeat it. And it's really as simple as that. And people, ah, it's a secret to success. Not caring if this is the right way, but just making a thing happen. And people's more people waste, people waste more time trying to decide, should I do this? Should I do this? Should I do this? And they never get anything done. And they're 10 years later going, well, I make sure when I do this thing and the next thing you're too old to make something happen in the way you would like. The other thing, though, is that once you do a thing, once you do a thing, you make a thing and you have a success, a first one is how do you not F that up? And I've watched so many people I know screw it up, you know, screw it up. The first thing that happens is overconfidence. The first thing that happens is like, ah, oh, well, I got a, I got a published novel. I'm now a novelist. Now I'm an expert on all things writing. And I was like, I told myself, like, nope. It's a path. It's a journey. Because I because I would read books by really good authors and go, man, this was a crappy book. How did this happen? And I'm like, this person who's a way better writer than me made did something, made mistakes, got arrogant, did whatever. And I said, I don't want I don't want that to happen. Uh, relationships with publishers and stuff is like when I get a deadline. I may ask for extensions or stuff or whatever, but I'm always clear. I'm always like, hey, I'm doing this thing. Can we get an extension? I always work within that. I don't push that. I don't abuse that at all because I want to have a great relationship with my publishers. I want them to know I'm reliable. And I, I realize that I'm in an industry where most people are unreliable. Mm -hmm. You know, publishers often give people deadlines thinking that like, well, it might take another three months or six months to get this thing out of the writer or the writer may come back and say, oh, I don't have it. The muse didn't strike. I'm like, I never want to be in that situation. Like I want to deliver. Yeah. You know? And yeah. so it's just trying to figure out like, cause you know, I know I'm going to make mistakes. I just want to avoid the ones that I can see coming. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's my goal. Yeah. yeah. And that's, and that's building trust with a, with a business partner. You know, that's, that's, that's yeah. the kind of behavior that, that, uh, gives you leeway and earns you credit and shows that like the next time, you know, you realize so much, especially in, in entertainment, how many decisions are made where, a bunch of people that you'll never in a room you'll never see are making a risk analysis decision and it doesn't and the, so much goes into it it's the reason why television production so hard because you're often dealing with people that you haven't dealt with before and so the known commodity wins and so if you become a known commodity what do you want to be known for 
is ultimately the reason why you have the work ethic. Because right. uh, uh, if you are known for delivering on time uh, and being easy to work with, then when those risk anal- uh, 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 when those risk decisions come up, then you'll be the least risky option, and you will do well from it. Yeah, yeah, and you find yeah the enthusiasm. Like I have a I have a wonderful agent, and I have a great relationship with her. One is that I do whatever she tells me, you know, like her advice. You know, I mean, if I don't, I'll sometimes I'm going to do it this way, whatever. I listen to her advice. I deliver. I try to look good. And and I because I think that it's worked out really well, because once I realized that she said, all right, I want to work with you. I'm like, I got to live up to this. I haven't arrived. I've got to earn this now. You know, and it's when you sit in an office and you're looking at, you know, a jewelry box that was given to her by her, you know, again, I'm going to, I'm going to name drop here. You know, when her, the jewelry box that's given to her, you know, by her, her good friend, Carrie Fisher. And you look over on the wall and you see a book that was by her, her former client, Hunter S. Thompson. And you realize <laughs> she learned the industry from Michael Crichton. And all of a sudden I can see myself shrinking in the chair, you know, <laughs> going, I don't belong here. I really don't belong here. You know? And I'm like, I need to earn this. I got to work my ass off because, you know, you're just, you just, <laughs> you know, I can't like clap my, like, yeah, I'm and, on same league as Hunter. No, no, no idiot. You know, and, you're, and for, you're a person as, she's, you know, likes and wants to work with because there's a potential there, but. And for as intimidating as that is, right? Like that's, that's, you know, her experience and, and her value to, to the relationship. You know, we, we, you know, we talk a lot about like self-publishing and, and, and being, being in, in work for yourself. But like you said, Andrew, like that's kind of how people, they get cocky. They think that they know everything when really they knew one thing at one time. And, you know, one of, one of the values of a larger publisher or a label or, or whoever is that they have a higher view of, of, you know, of the, of whatever industry you're in, you know, there's, there, there is some, there, there is some value in that. Uh, not always, you know, and, and, but I think in, in a position where you're at, where you're making good stuff, you're delivering and, uh, you know, they, they can help, you can help each other, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You know, and so I, I'm, I'm still figuring this stuff out. I'm still, and I am, I try to make myself very aware of how much luck factors into it. And I mean, I can, I think I work my ass off. I absolutely do. But I also know that there are a lot of people who work really, really hard. And the reason they haven't had this sort of success is because they didn't work hard enough. It's because, like, and I know I've missed out on a lot of stuff too, though. You know, you find out afterwards, like, oh, we were almost put you up for this. But we did this thing. Oh, yeah, no, your producer waited a week to turn this thing in. You didn't get it. You know, and it's like, ah, okay. You know, so it's the other side of it too. But yeah. No. Uh, it's thrilling. It's very exciting. And I'm very grateful to everybody who read the book, left reviews for it. And man, I mean, putting out it, doing a new, like, Naturalist, I knew was going to be a different sort of book, you know. And that that was interesting to see that. And that naturalist got this got selected for that same slot three years ago. You know, so that was the launch of the naturalist. And I think yeah. that was the big a big turning point for my career. And to have it happen with a second book was phenomenal. And now what's great is like I look at all the people who are getting into this book and I can see the numbers from all the people that are getting to my other books. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, and that's another point that- discovery. Yeah, the benefit the benefit of having a big catalog because you are a, prol- a, a prolific writer is when you have a hit. Boy, yeah. how, is there a whole world for people to go and enjoy? Yep, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, gentlemen, do you want to do some picks? Yeah, yeah. Let's do. Uh, you go, Justin. Right. I got a pick. So, uh, Doctor Who is not my pick because I was not really a fan of the season. So I will pick. <laughs> Uh, uh, I did finish it. I mean, frustrating. I mean, very frustrating season. Uh, there's some good things. There's the, 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 the older, uh, companion, I think is probably the most, uh, uh, he is my favorite companion they've had recently, but, oh, geez, the rest. Oh, Hachi Machi. Uh, here's my pick. It's on ESPN. It's called, uh, The Last Dance. It is a 10 part documentary series about uh, Michael Jordan and the Bulls in the 90s. Even if you are not a sports fan, um, 
it is worth it just because that team was so indelibly printed on pop culture. And, and you just, it, it really could be a documentary about a band um, and, and all the inner workings inside of it. Uh, but uh, the first two episodes aired on ESPN uh, last night. They're going to be airing two episodes a week for the next few weeks. Uh, but, uh, the, the, the real kind of crazy thing about it is that the, uh, there was a documentary crew that recorded behind the scenes with the 97, 98 bulls, the last, the end of that dynasty, uh, under the agreement with Michael Jordan, who controlled his own image rights, that they would never do anything with the footage unless he agreed. And he never agreed to anything until 2016 when he finally agreed to do this project. Uh, so this is Michael Jordan kind of being, uh, uh, you, you see some raw elements of it and apparently it only gets raw as you go in, but on ESPN, they are airing it without, uh, censorship. Wow. You hear all the F bombs ESPN, uh, when they air it live on, uh, on Sunday nights, uh, the edited version for all the families is on ESPN too, but, uh, it's, it, it's it's pretty good, and and you see a lot. I mean, very rarely at that level of fame do you get that kind of access in any field. Yeah, wow, that's super cool. I haven't seen it yet, but I've heard the phrase "cocaine circus," and so yes, I'm I'm all aboard. You know, uh, yeah, and there is there is definitely another. Uh, uh, a hateable figure, not unlike how people have uh, coalesced around their ire for Carol Baskin. Uh, there is a a GM, the GM of the Bulls. Uh, you know, basketball fans are aware of the story, but if you're not, you're just going to watch a middle manager uh, effectively pull the plug on one of the most potent pop culture phenomenons of all time, simply because he wants to prove that he's the boss. Wow. Yeah. Super cool. Uh, is that streaming anywhere? Do they have that on like ESPN plus or something? Do you know? So I don't know. I'm sure that it's probably playing on ESPN. I know that this was a co-production with Netflix and Netflix has the international rights. Oh. So, I mean, if, if, uh, if there's a little VPN action in your life, you might be able to go ahead and stream it. But, yeah. Yeah. um, the uh, uh, beyond that, it it's probably it's probably on a web player somewhere with ads because they sold the living crap out of it on on TV. Oh, nice! Uh, I got a pick. I've been playing this uh, for a couple weeks now on uh, on the Twitch stream, and uh, I I've I've really come to enjoy it. It's uh, the new uh, Final Fantasy VII remake. This is a uh, re a completely new retelling of the first part of the. Uh, uh, seminal 1997 uh, uh, RPG, Final Fantasy VII, but in 97. Because you want to know, what, you want to know what's amazing is that uh, uh, you know I, I I don't leave my house. Final Fantasy VII is all the rage, and ESPN is wall to wall Michael Jordan. It's 97 all over again. Uh, <laughs> uh, this is uh, everything. Everything 97 is back in a big way. Mm -hmm. I uh, I am I'm really enjoying this. I'm really enjoying this retelling of the game, and I was really un uh, unsure of if it would be any good because Square's track record with Final Fantasy games the past uh, decade has been pretty bad. Um, but this is is uh, a fantastic retelling of the story. Uh, they add a lot of new content. They flesh out a lot of characters who were more secondary in uh, in the original story, um, and I, I and I think it's really good. There's there's a there's a lot that I look at and say like this doesn't look good. This this delivery or this performance is not good. This is like really weirdly structured or th like there's a lot of pay There's some real big pacing issues on it, but I, I don't think I had had one of those big, like nostalgia waves for any sort of like revival content until this. Um, I mean, j just, I, we did the stream on Friday playing it and I got to this new section and they have this very iconic music soundtrack to it that they've recreated 
and just hearing it again in like full CD audio and, and seeing it in the moment and, and, and everything. It just, I don't know, it, it, it really excited me. So I think for, for all of its flaws, I, I really digging so far, I'm not done with it, but I, I hear that there's, there's more to it. Uh, I'm really, I really digging uh, seven remake. Well, I, I'm going to double down on a pick I made before, which I talked about, which is I've been really enjoying Stargate Atlantis on, you know, it's on Amazon prime and, you know, it's a show that the you know, Stargate, I think was a great show it was a really fun show. You know, one of the longest running science fiction shows ever, like for one particular run of a series mm-hmm. and Atlantis was those writers, you know, sort of taking what they learned from there and the show writers from there and then doing a new series new series on this. And I just finished the first season of it. And I enjoyed it. I thought the characters were well done. Everybody's pretty smart. You know, they're dealing with sort of well-defined problems. Um, and so I've just, you know, really been enjoying it. It's kind of just sort of nice kind of comfort TV. Nice. Is that, where is that streaming now? Now that the Stargate port, now that the portal, Stargate portal has closed. Amazon Prime. Amazon mm-hmm. Prime's got, got all three of the series on there. And if you never checked out the show, I, I you know, it's one of these things that was like, you know, it was syndicated and it was sort of these things that never got kind of the heat that other shows did. But, you know, Stargate, the SG-1, that did 10 seasons. You wow. know, no Star Trek shows ever gone 10 seasons. Yeah. And so that went 10 seasons of that. And, you know, it just, you know, simple premise. We have this magic portal that can take us anywhere. Where does it take us now? And what do we find? And there's over their story, you know, it takes, starts off the storyline from the movie and continues on from there. But, you know, just getting to the core idea of let's have a small group of people who are really interesting and have their own dynamic, put them in these interesting situations, the most interesting things we can figure out to do in British Columbia. And, uh, <laughs> you know, we're going to we're going to do a show about ancient Egyptian gods set in Canada. <laughs> you know? but, but then you probably appreciate that, too, because you kind of go like there's there's something to not having. Uh, you know, you watch like Star Trek Discovery, you know, or I haven't even seen Picard, but you're like, you got the money, you can do anything you want, but man, this is what you wanted to do. <laughs> this is it. Yeah. This is this is this is the storyline. You yeah. know. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. anyhow, uh, that's my pick. Cool. Awesome, everybody. Thank you so much for the support for the book. I thank you everybody out there who has read it, reviewed it, whatever. Very, very, very grateful. And, uh, you know, let's see if we can stay in the top 10 for a little while longer. You know? We'll see. We'll see. Reviews, reviews. If you've read it, review it. Review if it. Read yep. it, review it. The girl it needs yep. to see. It's help. And uh, it's been after. Hey, we did it, everybody. We did the show. Alrighty. Well, uh, I think we're going to call it here early uh, because uh, we've, we've got uh, our internet stuff going on. But Because uh, the internet is horrible. It's, yeah. yeah. The internet's yeah. bad. Uh, well, I'll tell you what. You might see us uh, or or maybe maybe we'll take our first oh, uh, yeah. uh, happy yeah. hour off at, at the top of the hour. We will We will inform you. Uh, uh, as as we go forward, but uh, until then, friends, I will uh, we will bid you a fond adieu. Yeah, thank you, everybody. Have a good one. <laughs>